the U.S. government just sold a massive underground stockpile of helium in Amarillo. The Federal Helium Reserve supplies up to 30 percent of the country's resource. So this is a sale that has the medical world worried over those shortages. Joining us this afternoon is Caroline Hopkins, who is following this story. Caroline, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for your interest. So let's talk about the deal. Can you just outline that for us? What's being made with that deal and how it could really create problems for the helium supply? Sure, sure. So as you mentioned, you know, the U.S. has this massive um, reserve of helium, about a billion cubic feet worth under Texas. And it's had it for a while, but um, this deal is, you know, I should say it's just the first step. The deal has to be finalized still. But the uh, U.S. government essentially took the first step in transferring it into private hands. Um, and the reason that this is concerning, you know, it's not a problem from what I'm hearing from sources to have it in, you know, private hands and, you know, generally speaking, but to do it right now without addressing some logistical issues at this facility could result in a temporary shutdown of this really essential element, helium. And hospitals are one of the largest users of helium, especially when it comes to MRI machines. Do they have any fears about patient care and how th that could be impacted? Yeah, so that's actually what um, what piqued my, my interest as a health reporter in this story in the first place. And I think that um, people tend to think of helium as in its gas form because we know it, you know, how it inflates a balloon. But one of the really big, um, actually far more, um, uh, you know, in demand and serious uses for this element is running MRI machines. And they are, you know, what doctors use to peer inside your body and see injuries and tumors and tough to see places on x-rays, you know, like the brain, you can see a stroke and things like that. But MRI machines have this really intense magnet. And the only way it works is if you can have liquid helium, which is the coldest element on earth. Um, it's, it's boiling point is about 450 degrees below uh, zero Fahrenheit. And there's really nothing, there's no alternative for it. So if you can't have helium, you can't have an MRI. Um, and I should really point out just that this is not going to impact MRIs tomorrow. It's not like the second the deal goes through, you're not going to be able to go in and, and get an MRI. What we're really concerned about is down the line, you know, with the supply chain downstream effects, um, doctors are are concerned about being able to um, use this really vital resource in their diagnosis and patient care. And speaking of looking down the line, what are MRI manufacturers doing to come up with solutions really for the future of the technology? Yeah, definitely. I think that this is something that's, you know, top of mind for a lot of companies that uh, make the MRI machines. You know, if, if you know, in the future, this uh, really essential element isn't you know, a sure bet, they want to develop machines that use potentially less helium or maybe even no helium down the line. Uh, the thing is, it's really quite a big ask to replace all the MRI machines in the country overnight. I mean, first of all, it's expensive. Second of all, uh, they're like 50,000 pounds or something like that. And they're supposed to last decades. You know, you're supposed to be able to use these machines in your hospital for, you know, at least 10, 12, maybe, you know, double that um, depends on the machine, but a lot of years. So to replace it is not a quick fix. Um, but yeah, they are, um, there are companies out there. I think Philips and, and Siemens are, are two of them that are developing low or no helium alternatives. Um, so there, there is sort of um, a potential fix, but again, uh, it's just a question of timing and, and if we can sort of um, innovate fast enough. Okay, Caroline Hopkins, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.